Uh, hi everyone. This is uh, I'm Yatish Mamania, a founding partner of Integrity Matters. We started in 2013 as a pure play provider of uh, what we call a third-party ethics helpline, also known as whistleblower hotline service in India. And since then, we work with uh, we work with many companies uh, to operate their whistleblower mechanism. So uh, today's agenda is to uh, I'll give you a background about this uh, initiative and uh, an overview of the third party ethics helpline service so what does it uh, entail and maybe share our some of our experience working with clients over the years uh, and then we'll open up for q a this is if any of you wants a more detailed walkthrough of the system or anything we can schedule it uh, through risk pro as convenient so let's uh, jump right into it so in terms of background you know that these are some numbers in terms of uh, Revenue loss to fraud and malpractice within organizations. A number of cases of frauds detected through tip-offs. Number of tip-offs that are anonymous or communicated via employees, etc. Of course, this data is more from a fraud perspective. So, when we talk of ethics, it's a broader term uh, that uh, encompasses your entire code of conduct. So, you know, companies have a code of conduct and a whistleblower policy aimed at enabling people to red flag any violations of the code of code, code of conduct or any policy or law and so that it, it, these numbers just focus on fraud but ethics is a broader space but just to give you some background and this is the regulatory framework in india for listed companies uh, section 177 of the companies act requires companies to have a vigil mechanism uh, safeguard reporters against victimization and uh, independent directors to ensure that the mechanism is adequate and functional although the law does not define what they mean by adequate and functional so it's kind of subject to interpretation and oversight by audit committee so audit committee needs to review and uh, you know report to the board on on the vigil mechanism so uh, instead of whistleblower i think they're using the term vigil mechanism so that's the regulatory framework and uh, the role of the board the Senior leadership and the board has an important role to play in this because increasingly as the standards of corporate governance are rising and ethics is central to uh, a, how a company is perceived, uh, companies are increasingly adopting various ways to demonstrate their commitment to it. And uh, the third uh, whistleblower mechanism, a strong whistleblower program is a good way to demonstrate that commitment. Uh, and of course, that has to be overseen by the board and the senior leadership, driven by the senior leadership. So uh, whenever you have a strong mechanism, it's not just good governance, but also gives confidence to your stakeholders, employees, investors, that you have a strong ethics framework and an internal control mechanism, which also often reflects in a company's valuation of the stock price. So this is uh, not just a fad or a trend, but a new standard here to stay. Uh, the strong whistleblower mechanism that is and uh, so what is a third party helpline now companies have uh, some kind of internal mechanism uh, as part of their whistleblower policy for people to red flag any incident they may come across however in our experience what happens is these internal channels don't see a very high degree of adoption among the stakeholders uh, because of primarily you know either lack of awareness and or uh, mainly lack of confidence in the system credibility or lack of trust in the system so a third party ethics helpline uh, other than being a part of good governance or a global best practice is uh, meant to supplement these internal channels and strengthen the program uh, by acting as a bridge between the reporters and company management so that the communication around uh, these issues can be facilitated by is facilitated by a third party in a secure, reliable, and confidential manner. And it's not meant to replace your internal hierarchy or internal channels, but meant to supplement it. So if someone comes across an ethical violation, maybe your employee or a vendor or a third party, their first option should be to report it to their immediate supervisor or manager. And if they're not comfortable or if the report complaint is against the supervisor, then they should report it to an appropriate internal function like hr or risk or compliance or or not or legal but if they're not comfortable doing that uh, or they've done that and haven't got a satisfactory resolution then the third party helpline is meant as a 
additional avenue or a channel for them to raise their concern or ask a query beyond the company's existing channels. And uh, so that brings us to the comparison. So what is the difference between in-house and a third-party managed whistleblower mechanism? So firstly, in terms of coverage, typically in-house you will be limited, you'll be typically covering your employees, whereas with a third-party helpline, the entire business ecosystem can be covered, including your, uh, for example, Sorry. The entire ecosystem can be covered in terms of third parties, vendors, suppliers, distributors, agents, um, and anybody uh, who has anything to do with you can be covered as part of the scope. In terms of modes of communication, typically companies have some kind of internal ID or a postal address where people can uh, write. And uh, with a third party helpline, you have an option of at least four or more channels. Uh, so there's a toll-free telephone helpline. There is a web-based reporting, email, and post. So there are more channels or modes of communication. These channels are also available in multiple languages. So that's an uh, additional advantage. For example, more, you know, on the phone line, there are several English, Indian, several regional languages that we operate. Uh, and one of the most important features of a third-party or a managed help, uh, helpline is that the reporters can be truly anonymous and this is an important feature because if you operate a mechanism internally let's say you have an email id and people can create some gmail id and write an email to you but the email will have the source ip address so technically uh, the reporter can be tracked back and the anonymity is not guaranteed in these internal channels so third with a third party mechanism like ours or a helpline like ours the anonymity is full, can be fully guaranteed because we don't track, we don't share any identifying information. If the reporter chooses to remain anonymous, there is, we don't share any identifying information with the client organization. And that's very important because a majority, and I'll show you some metrics, a majority of the reports are anonymous. In terms of identity protection also, because there is a proper system in place, even if somebody comes forward with their identity, uh, they it's easy for you to, protect their identity, uh, to pr protect them from retaliation, if it's in a system rather than in an email that can get circulated to a broader audience. So the identity protection in the context of anti-retaliation also gets strengthened. Then there is a case management system. So right now, all the cases, most companies track them in some kind of an Excel sheet or a Word document, uh, which is you know there with one designated person. And this is not the best way to manage it for several reasons, because it's not secure. Uh, it's prone to unauthorized disclosure and Excel can easily be circulated. It's harder to hand over when that person who's handling that Excel leaves, then the handover may not be smooth. Whereas if you have a proper online system, then it, it it's not person dependent. It systemizes the whole thing. Uh, you cannot, the integrity, confidentiality and availability of data is maintained, uh, guaranteed in an uh, online system. In terms of uh, communications, the system also enables automated communications at every step. So, for example, whenever a new complaint comes in, all the designated case managers are notified. When a reporter provides additional information or response to your follow-up question, everybody is notified. So, there are the whole communication is much more smoother and automated in case of a system. And uh, in terms of awareness, uh, companies typically will have a policy on the website, or they will, uh, you know make it part of their induction training there'll be a slide or two on the whistleblower mechanism but in case of a third party uh, integrity matters helpline there's a comprehensive publicity and awareness campaign that comes with it which is very important in uh, as, you know establishing it in people's minds and uh, building their confidence uh, through multiple channels uh, and multiple formats including print digital and face to face communications and i'll give you an overview of that as well uh, in terms of also response, uh, so this a case management system will also enable you to have a give a role based access or a restricted access to people. So let's say you are a case manager and you want to delegate the investigation to somebody, you can assign it to somebody and that investigator will only see that case assigned to him or her and not all the cases. So you can give role based access to people, maintain a complete audit trail of all the action taken on each and every case, and it will automate a lot of your response as per your process. And the last point, which I think is the most important, is measuring effectiveness. So whether you're operating a your whistleblower mechanism in-house or if it's outsourced, it uh, the, the most important thing is to measure the effectiveness and benchmark it with others so that 
you understand how well it's working in your context if you're making that time and resource investment then you should get the value from it and this is the most important thing so there are several kpis that we track as part of the third party helpline and once in a year we do an annual benchmarking uh, right where we compare a company's whistleblower data with the global benchmarks and give them insights into how the helpline is performing in their context compared to others and uh, I'll, I'll walk you through some of these uh, metrics as well so in terms of uh, in terms of effectiveness so how do you compare with others and these are some of the metrics that are tracked so the first metric is report volume now uh, globally and this data comprises of uh, is a median of 1.4 million reports covering 50 million employees across the world so it's a fairly reliable data uh, it's not a small data set by any means and this is from the navex benchmarking report 2020 so the first is uh, report volume so if you look at the median uh, number of reports per 100 employees it's 1.4 globally the higher end is 2.4 and the average is 3.4 reports per 100 employees now if you compare this report volume with your own report volume from the last one year you will see the difference in performance or effectiveness of your mechanism compared to the global average or median the second is category wise breakup so i think i missed one of the points here so 65% of the reports pertain to HR, harassment, discrimination, behavioral issues, and the balance 24% pertain to either accounting, auditing, financial reporting, or business integrity issues. Uh, environment, health, safety, misuse, misappropriation of corporate assets comprise 11% of the reports. So that's a breakup of all the whistleblower complaints by nature of complaint or category of uh, issue. And uh, Anonymous reporting rate. So globally, 59% of the reports received through whistleblower channels are anonymous. In India, this number is, a, is slightly higher. I think it's around between 70 to 80%. And again, that shows the trust deficit compared to global. Uh, because if people are afraid to come forward openly, then there is that. Uh, Mona Lisa, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. It told me that you know, your audio is lost. Okay. So, no, sorry, continue. All right. And uh, follow up rates for anonymous reports. So, this is an interesting metri metric. So, uh, what happens is many a times people will file a whistleblower complaint and then maybe you you send them a response or you send some follow-up question because maybe you need more information because maybe the report the information provided by the reporter was not adequate from an investigation standpoint so this indicates the rate of follow-up for anonymous reports if the reporter is named then you can directly reach out to the reporter and follow up but if the reporter is anonymous then out of 100 complaints 36 percent people will follow up on the report the rest will just file a report and then kind of disappear and then the substantiation rate so substantiation rate is the percentage of reports that those were proven to be true after an investigation so 43 percent reports were proven to be true which does not mean that the balance 57 uh, percent are false it just means that they could not be the facts could not be established as uh, provided by the reporter so but 43 percent is a pretty good substantiation rate uh, given that you know uh, you have to conclusively arrive at the uh, that uh, to, to the conclusion that uh, The second last metric is actually interesting uh, substantiated anonymous versus named reports so generally there is a perception among companies that anonymous reports are not credible now if you look at the substantiate substantiation rates uh, there is some truth to it uh, anonymous reports are substantiated at 38 percent and named report substantiation percentage is 50 percent 
but the difference is not as much as you would think if you come take 100 whistleblower reports 38 anonymous reports were found to be true and 15 named reports were found to be true so the difference is only 12 reports uh, that were not credible in case of anonymous reports so the diff there is a difference in credibility but not as much as companies tend to think which is not the case and then the case closure time in days so on average the time from receiving the report to closing it is 45 days and this is a median i think there's another metric which tracks the date of incident versus date of reporting so let's say something happened today uh, then the median number of days in which you will hear about it through the whistleblower mechanism is 21 days which is a median and there are several other KPIs. So uh, now let's get into the third party helpline and its various components. So you have a code of conduct and a, a whistleblower policy and, a, and your POSH framework. The third party helpline provides uh, multiple channels of reporting any violations of your code of conduct through the whistleblower policy or any POSH complaint. Uh, and uh, all the intake channels, so there is a toll free telephone helpline. So people can just pick up the phone and talk to somebody at our end or they can uh, come to a uh, company branded website that we that, that is hosted on our servers and file their complaint on, on a self service basis or they can send us a, an email on a designated email id or they can send us a written letter at the address provided in the communications so these are the four intake channels that we operate and all these intake channels are integrated with a case management system which is the second part of the helpline now the case management system as i was saying is meant for your ethics committee or your whistleblower committee so it's a workflow driven system with multiple inbuilt roles uh, so there is there are case managers who are like full admins with full access to the system there are investigators with restricted access to specific cases and then there, is, there are auditors who can be given read-only access for maintaining oversight etc and then there is a comprehensive publicity and awareness campaign that comes with it and there are metrics and benchmarking that happens to measure the effectiveness of the helpline so these are all the various uh, key components of the third party ethics helpline uh, so yeah this is a credible speak up system it's a best practice it one of the interesting uh, uses of this is you know sometimes media and air their views on maybe twitter or various uh, linkedin etc uh, so if you have a strong internal mechanism it encourages people to give that a chance before they go public or go to the regulator or go to social media so you are also encouraging people to uh, come through the third party before going public and uh, it it protects the company it protects employees because it uh, gives them assurance that their concerns will be heard and they are important to the company the reporter is entitled to a safe means four to 2.3 percent of the workforce which will be higher than any internal mechanism typically i have not seen an internal mechanism that output third party and uh, like i was saying this can be extended to your entire business ecosystem not just employees uh, because vendors dealers agents also have uh, matter excuse me mr yatish hello Six counselors are trained to uh, warm them up. Excuse build. me, Mr. Yatish. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yatish, we are losing you in between. Like uh, your audio is not there, and then it's coming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello. 
we have lost you again. Uh, Hello? Yeah, am I audible now? Huh, yes. No, actually, in between, we are losing you for two seconds and then you come back, then again two seconds oh, after some time. I'm uh -huh, sorry that about way. that. I have switched uh, my network now. So let's okay, see if this okay. works better. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, in terms of the intake channel, so we have people who are trained to uh, handle whistleblowers who are typically nervous or hesitant to uh, uh, divulge information. So, the idea is to build trust. You know, warm them up, get them to divulge as much information as possible because you may not have another opportunity to talk to them if they're anonymous. And uh, then the idea is to capture enough information that is actionable from an investigation standpoint. So, what happens typically is uh, if somebody sends uh, an email, the information received will typically not be adequate from an investigation standpoint. Somebody will type a couple of paragraphs or copy us on a long mail trail. Now, so we have a robust process in place to and a certain structure in which we capture information so it ensures that the specifics who what when how of a specific incident is captured rather than a generic complaint which is not actionable so the quality of report you receive will be more actionable from an investigation standpoint and uh, of course all of this is handled internally so we have people who, uh, who we call ethics counselors who are trained to handle phone calls then there is a separate quality team that uh, reviews all the reports before they are sent to the client. So there are two levels of quality checks that happen. And uh, the idea is to get all the facts, separate fact from emotion, report the matter the way it was received and not try to interpret it or put it in our own words because that can change the essence or the meaning of the report. So we are very careful not to put any of our own interpretation or bias into it or and just communicate factually the way it was received. And uh, one of the important things during the conversation with the whistleblowers is to query them on other research. Sometimes what happens is they're reporting a matter, but there are related issues. So it's important to probe those issues because there could be secondary issues or there could be, it turns out that there's some other issue, which is a primary issue and not what the person is reporting. So uh, querying them depending uh, on other uh, risks or concerns and document everything carefully so people can also provide supporting documents uh, to substantiate the allegation that they're making and those uh, supporting documents are also shared with the company which help uh, in the investigation and uh, the case management system is meant to uh, enable a two-way communication even when the reporters are anonymous so one of the features of the system is what happens is since majority of the reporters are anonymous there is no way for a company to reach out to them Right. Uh, so through the helpline, we will facilitate a two way communication with anonymous reporters so that uh, the communication loop is closed and which is a critical factor in the effectiveness of the helpline. And uh, regardless of the channel through which you receive the complaint and regardless of the whether the reporter is anonymous or not, the case management system will be a single interface to communicate with the reporters, which could include sending follow up questions. Maybe you need more information or sending official management response. Right. And uh, the other thing is it helps maintain a central repository of all reports. What this means is when you implement, implement a third party helpline, all the cases will be tracked in the case management system, logged and tracked in the case management system. But you will also continue to receive cases outside of the helpline internally, right? So maybe somebody writes you an email or walks into your office. Those reports can also be entered into the system. So all the reports, whether received to the helpline or internally, are tracked in one single central repository and uh, most importantly it safeguards the confidentiality of both the report and the reporter so with a system in place what happens is like, if somebody sends an email uh, internally that email can get leaked and get spread across the organization and we've seen this happen but with a system in place these reports cannot be easily uh, pulled out of the system or circulated widely so it's a very restricted access to designated people so it contains the issue within that boundary and there are analytical tools to pull out various uh, statistics and reports from the system. So typically companies will pull out these reports uh, for their board meet, quarterly board meetings or audit committee reviews. And so it makes it very easy click of a button, a whistleblower, uh, all the overview can be extracted with graphs and charts and you can share them with your audit committee or the board. And of course there are many more features, but this is not meant to be a detailed walkthrough of the case management system. So. Uh, role-based access so here you can restrict access based on the roles like i was saying so you can 
give people access based on the nature of the issue. So let's say you want to give access to your legal team for legal matters and HR uh, people access to behavioral issues and so forth. So you can give uh, access to people based on nature of complaint and the uh, priority high medium low etc and you can also give access based on role so case managers who are like full admins can give case specific access to investigators for investigation for example so uh, that people get access to data on a need to know basis uh, only for and posh cases can be routed to the ic committee and so forth and then the publicity campaign and i think this is important because most companies don't have time to put together a comprehensive professional publicity campaign around this so the helpline comes with a complementary and comprehensive publicity campaign including print digital and face to face in print uh, so all the communications are designed by a professional third party design agency that we engage and the designs are in line with your brand guidelines so we ask you for a copy of your brand guidelines including your logo brand colors etc and the communications are aligned to that and there's an agency that designs uh, creates professional designs uh, for these so in print uh, we uh, create posters uh, six poster designs wallet cards wallet cards are like visiting card size cards which can people can which can be distributed to all the employees and they can carry it in their wallet so if they need to uh, access the number it's there in their wallet then there are roll up standees laptop stickers laptop laptop stickers typically go on the flap of the laptop as a sticker with the 1 800 number or the helpline contact information then in digital, there is a speak up video which can be looped on LCD screens in common areas or go on your intranet or your internal uh, social media page like uh, Yammer or Facebook workplace, etc. We also draft uh, pre launch and at launch email memos when you launch the initiative internally so that you don't have to, you know, they, it can go from your CEO's mailbox, etc. There's desktop wallpaper, there is uh, e learning modules are not part of. Uh, ethics helpline but we also have various e-learning modules on compliance topics like code of conduct posh dni uh, insider trading etc and then there are face-to-face uh, -face training so there is a cms training for all the case management users which is typically your ethics committee and investigators then there are leadership there's a leadership session for your leaders to educate them on their role in making this a success because unless everybody is on board with the initiative it will not succeed uh, be as effective so there's a session for that and most importantly there are town halls for employees with the aim to cover all the employees and town halls are the most effective way in talking about this and there's a specific format in which we do it but uh, uh, th these are the most effective in in uh, building people's confidence uh, to report or to speak up and positioning the helpline for success so there are a number of critical success factors one point i want to make uh, uh, highlight strongly is that you know in terms of our experience working with uh, various companies over the last eight years has been that in terms of effectiveness uh, it's a spectrum so on one end there are companies that are maybe checking the global best practice box or maybe they have a investor on board and they want these good governance practices in place but the communication is weak the follow through is weak so the adoption is also low compared to the median or the benchmark of course the adoption is more than what they would get in house but it's still lower compared to global benchmarks so it doesn't work as effectively as it could on the other end of the spectrum there are value focused companies where the leadership stands behind it promotes it talks about it and they have a strong resolution mechanism in place etc where they see good adoption and value from it some companies even exceed the benchmarks uh, we even have cases where the board of directors sets the target for the leadership to in terms of how many reports should be received in a year even when they're re receiving 100 plus reports they want to double it in one case so in these cases uh, people also have a lot of confidence and the report quality is also higher in their case and they get a lot of value uh, for example one of the clients shared with us that one report that they received uh, will pay for the helpline for the next 12 years in terms of the money saved or whatever fraud detected so the effectiveness can vary a lot and that's where the critical success factors are important to be in place if you want value from it return on investment then these things are important sponsorship by top leadership tone at the top as we call it uh, communicating to users your objective how to use the system uh, 
how the system works, what should they expect, what is the process resolution mechanism once the report comes in, what are the expectations in terms of uh, you know uh, how many how much time will it take, who will look into it, etc. Closing the communication loop with reporters and uh, most importantly, sharing successes and case studies and MIS reports with others. So we highly encourage that once in a year, you should share a high level MIS of how many complaints were received, uh, how many are closed, how many are open and bro broad break breakup of the nature of complaints so that people know that this works. You're serious about it. Other people are reporting and it gives them confidence to speak up if they come across a ethical violation. So sharing uh, the case studies and MIS reports are also very important. Uh, support for reporters without anonymity this doesn't work so some companies say that our policy does not allow anonymous reporting but without anonymity uh, expecting people to be courageous and come forward with their identity is not very practical in most cases uh, openly communicated and fully enforced anti-retaliation policy so this is very important people should have the confidence that if they speak up uh, they will not be retaliated against what happens is uh, people sometimes remain anonymous but they're part of a small group so it's easy to for someone to guess who might have reported an issue and they could face retaliation. And in some cases, it's not possible to be anonymous. For example, in case of posh cases, right? The process, IC process requires the reporter to come forward with the identity. So in which case, uh, having a strong anti-retaliation policy is very important. And uh, of course, this is, if you want to go even further, recognizing genuine reporters and incentivizing those uh, who have reported valid complaints in good faith maybe giving them some kind of a recognition like employee of the month or something will also bolster the image of the whistleblower mechanism in the eyes of people. And so these are some of the things to do to position the helpline for success. And uh, in the interest of time, I would like to spare more time for Q&A, but let's go through this. So yeah, we started in 2013. We uh, served client offices in 70 plus countries across industry sectors. Most of our clients tend to be large listed companies, but we also work with uh, startups and uh, private companies, typically investing companies of private equity firms, etc. And uh, we, uh, our background has been in information security and privacy. So one of the concerns companies have around outsourcing their whistleblower mechanism is around data security and privacy, and I'll get into that shortly. Uh, so these are some of the clients we work with. Uh, a lot of uh, companies from the Tata group and the Aditya Billa group and others uh, who are the kind of uh, early adopters of these best practices. Some press coverage that we received and our differentiators. So because we are a pure play provider of the service, we don't have any conflict with statutory audit or advisory services. So uh, since we don't, we are not statutory auditors, uh, you won't have to change your provider or anything uh, in case of change in statutory auditors. Uh, we are also a very tech focused firms, uh, firm. So the, uh, the idea is to uh, systemize as, as much as possible and automate as much as possible in a secure uh, uh, system that has a good user experience. Helpline effectiveness. So one of our differentiators is our focus on effectiveness. Uh, we don't want to just implement a helpline for a client and then forget about it and then talk to you next year when the next bill is due. But we would like to engage with you throughout the year to make sure that the system is effective and you get the value from it. So going from where you are to meeting or exceeding the benchmark is typically a two, three year journey. And ideally we would like to work closely to make sure that it gets institutionalized in your context and uh, that you are meeting or exceeding the benchmarks. And therefore the helpline comes with a complimentary, not just a complimentary communication campaign, but also a complimentary benchmarking exercise. So once in a year on a complimentary basis, we will benchmark your data with global benchmarks to give you insights on, your, on the performance of the helpline. And high quality reports. So focus is on capturing as much inf quality information as possible so that the reports you received are actionable and uh, the report is relevant. advantages uh, of integrity matters third party helplines is pretty it's pretty much guaranteed that you will have more effectiveness compared to your existing channels at least in terms of report volume and mostly or likely in terms of report quality as well uh, professionally developed and managed service so all you know everybody at our end uh, has uh, is an expert in their respective area uh, i'll get into data privacy uh, shortly 
being an independent provider uh, uh, bolsters the credibility of the system uh, and in-house system is perceived to be less credible and outsourced services is per perceived to be more credible. Uh, so it supports that positive perception of your commitment to ethics and integrity. Flexibility in, in the choice of reporting channels along with high availability. So uh, most channels are 24 seven and uh, multilingual and uh, you have uh, multiple channels of reporting extended to external stakeholders in cooperation of best practices. So we are constantly tracking what's going on in this space across the world. And uh, one of the recent developments has been there is a new ISO 32002 standard for whistleblower systems. So there are companies that are now looking at getting ISO certified for their whistleblower program. So while some companies are really lagging in terms of how they think about whistleblowing, there are many companies who are uh, going beyond that and aligning with global standards. Reduction of costs. So of course, if you run a full service in house, it will be very expensive to do it here. The costs get uh, spread over many clients. So uh, it's also cost effective if you had to do the same thing in house compared to if you had to do the same thing in house and uh, improve your vendor suppliers adherence to code of conduct. So what most companies do is when they sign up a new vendor, they will send a code of conduct, ask them to sign it or read it or something. And most vendors will not read it because it's like a PDF document that nobody's going to read, which will typically cover things like gifts policy and entertainment and whatnot. But uh, giving them access to a helpline is uh, also a good way to improve their adherence so they can report on any violations. Uh, for example, if there is a request for gift from somebody at your end, whatever. And of course, it streamlines and strengthens case management. So uh, your turnaround time will reduce your communication will communications will smoothen out uh, tracking or and logging of all the action taken will be automated and Primarily, it will also help with record retention, proper retention of all the records, not just the case report, but also any supporting documents, any investigation files, or everything is maintained properly in the case management system, rather than having them on some folder in somebody's laptop or some SharePoint folder. And in terms of data security and privacy, so our data center is already ISO certified, and at an organizational level, we are getting ISO certified uh, the, right now. And we've always followed the best practices. Uh, so our background has been in information security and data privacy. Uh, my own background has been in that space. So I was heading uh, security for Accenture in India, and I was also part of the risk advisory practices of EY and Deloitte in the US, focusing on cybersecurity. And I'm a graduate of Carnegie Mellon University in information security policy and management. So I'm the, also the chief information security officer of the company. And uh, so we've always followed the best practices, not just for data security, but also for data privacy. We are compliant with the European GDPR standards as well. And we have a very comprehensive program and I won't get into the details of everything, but now we are also getting an external validation. So we undergo several external audits and client audits for our information security program and data privacy practices. So very robust program. So the, uh, my argument will be this will be more secure your data in our system will be more secure than perhaps even in house because in a large organization the day, there are more vulnerabilities or points of uh, you know exploiting a system rather than a tightly controlled system by a, a third party who whose job is to protect your data basically so uh, happy to discuss this uh, in detail if needed <laughs>